Hi, my name is Marian, and in the next five sessions, we are going to talk about script writing and how to do it. And I'm going to challenge you at the end of each session to do something with a, a script to, for you to write your own script. So, we are doing script writing, not screenwriting. We're doing plays, not screenwriting. Screenwriting is a whole different ball game. And although that would be a lot of fun, uh, we're just going to focus on script writing this time around. So, let me tell you about me right quick. I have written a lot of scripts. These are some of the scripts that I've written uh, for children to perform. This was a full-length musical uh, for a community thing that I did. Uh, these 72 silly and short manas for kids or whoever. Um, is that what it says? Good. And I actually put that as an ebook. And then I also have Short scripts for two to three kids, short scripts for four to six kids. Again, I ebook those and uh, have people performing them elsewhere, right? And then I also happen to have in my notebook, not printed out fancy or anything like that, uh, radio, radio scripts. Um, again, that's a little bit different, uh, but not by much for a play. Okay. I have some melodramas. Again, not printed out fancy at this point in time. And those were so old, they're falling apart now. All right, I got more scripts for children to perform. I uh, had them in notebooks instead of fancy things. Um, some of my scripts happen to be e-booked. Okay, then I also have uh, two to three person scripts for adults to perform for children. So I have all of those as two. Again, that's not everything I have. Then I have two person scripts for murder mysteries that my husband and I do. And then we involve the audience. Involving audience is a, another technique that's pretty interesting to do. Our children's shows that are done with adults to perform for children are um, also interactive and, and again that's fun stuff. So there you go. There's some of the ones that I've done. Good. I have that. Now today what we're going to do is talk about several things before I give you your writing assignment. We're going to talk about formatting. So when you're writing a play, let me show you. There's a couple of ways to format. For formatting you might have the name <coughs> excuse me, of the character in the center and look it's all capitalized. And then right here, underneath, it might say something like sadly, or quickly, or entering, blah, 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 blah. So they talk, okay? Then, then, then there is a space, and then the other character, again, all caps, anything in parentheses that tells them what to do or what they are doing. And then, of course, they're busy talking, 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 okay? Now, I have, where do I have this? Um, lines, okay. So that's one way. You center the... Uh, capitalized name of the character who's going to speak, you uh, give any stage directions right underneath, and then boom, there's the line. You would also, you also might need something below that that tells, oh, this is happening, that's happening, the other thing's happening, boom, and then back to the dialogue. Dialogue are the, the words that people speak. Okay, so we did the formatting stuff, or at least we talked about it for just a second. No, 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 that particular formatting. Now, let me show you another script. I printed this out. I have the script in smaller form, but I printed this out so that I could have it handy. And of course, I can't see it when I'm holding it up, uh, but you'll notice that you've got the character's name all in caps, followed by a colon, followed by stage directions. That's what people are not going to say. And then, -doo 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 -doo, that's what the person is saying. And there happens to be another parentheses right there, exits. And we know that that character exits. Now, this is from a treasure island that I wrote uh, for kids to perform. And here we go. There's mother. And she's supposed to what? Enter. And then she has her line. Now, before that happens... Jim comes in, and here's the instructions. He comes in, rushes in with a large box and a broom. He scoops all the dishes into the box and sets it aside. He straightens benches and stools. He sweeps the dirt into the corner. So there you have that. It's a parenthetical, which means nobody's going to read that out loud. This, mother's going to read that. Jim's going to read that. Mother, and who's that? Jim, and mother, et cetera, and so forth, and so on, until other characters come in. And we're going to have things like um, enter and exit and that kind of thing, uh, plus any direction. For instance, in one of these, Jim says, yes, ma'am. And then in parentheses, it says, goes to the door, calls out. The Admiral Bimbo is now open. Okay, so there we go. We have the stuff in parentheses, which tell, tells an actor what's happening. And then we have their actual lines. Okay, so that's that one. And here we have another one. This one is, which one is this one? When Eldie Caught the Rainbow. Hell, I can't even think of my own titles. All right, let me show you a couple of things on this that aren't... Uh, in the one that I just told, showed you, Treasure Island. You have here a parentheses for the teacher. And it doesn't say exits or enters or goes over there. It says kindly, patiently. Because I didn't want someone to think, as they were doing this, and if they were the teacher, I didn't want them to think that 
they're being rude because the line is, shh, keep working students. So I didn't want the teacher to come off like, shh, keep working students. I wanted to make sure that this teacher was kind and patient. So that's what I did with the teacher. I wanted to make sure that that got there. Now, there's a, a parenthetical for the students, and it's students get busy. That's all. That's all I needed for that point. I don't often feel fill in tons of, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. But I do put in a little bit, okay? So those are the parentheticals. And then um, for this one, also, I wanted to show you this. Now, setting. Notice the caps and the underlining. It says, the stage is empty except for five blocks upstage right. Four blocks facing right are in one or two rows for students. The fifth block at center right is teacher's desk. So there you go. And then... It has at rise. At rise means when the curtain opens. Now, if there is no curtain, it just means at the beginning of the show, here's what's going to happen right then, right there. At rise. Elvie and friends are sitting in class doing work. They are in a frozen tableau, which means they're sitting there looking like they're ready to do something. Okay? Um, and then the colors enter. Okay, in this one, the colors were characters. And... They enter and they say, when Elvie caught the rainbow, a tall tale of a small kid. And notice I wrote it like that so that the people who were playing these characters could do it like that. Here are the words to the song. And so everybody's going to pop up and sing this song. Notice that for words to the song, this is what I do. It's not what everybody does. But this also allows uh, your actors to know, and you when you're going back through it, to know what it is, where that song is. This is different. It's not just dialogue, okay? So that helps me. It helps you as, as the writer. It helps uh, the people who you're directing. So I've got them all caps, and I've got them over, indented, okay? So those are the words to the song. So that's how I do my songs as well. And with uh, Treasure Island, I have the setting, all caps, underlined, then a space. Not, not a, on this one, I don't have a space between setting and at rise. Uh, and at rise, then it says what that's going. So setting, two tables with benches and stools are at center. They are strewn with dishes. Stools are overturned. A door or door frame is down right. At rise. Polly enters. So it's not someone coming on and standing in front of the audience. I mean, I'm sorry, let me rephrase. In this instance, it is someone just entering right then and there. With when Ellie caught the rainbow, that was when everybody came on, got settled, and um, there, and then the curtain goes up. And that's when the show begins. Okay? Um, then, three fables of Aesop. Okay. So again, you've got your setting, you've got your at rise, okay? It tells, it tells what your stage looks like before you even open the uh, curtain. In this one, there are three boxes on the stage. Up center, center left, and center right. About eight chunks of food for the ants are scattered on the stage and throughout the audience. So that is telling, before the audience even gets to the theater or wherever you're performing, I've done a lot of these outside, I've done some inside, you know, that kind of thing. But before the audience even arrives, this is the setup. And then at rise, again. That is what's going to happen the moment it's time to start the show. <clears throat> and in this case, it's all enter. That's my big whoop. Everybody comes in because, as you can see, they've got whoosh, song to sing there. Okay, good. So in some of these um, scripts that I've written, there isn't much of a setting. I might say, the stage is blank. On Treasure Island 1, I have three different scenes and so even, they're one, even though they're one right after another, they have to have different things on the stage. So the, the setting and the at rise are different in those three different scenes. Okay? So just so that you know, with uh, Treasure Island, it's at uh, Jim and his mother's um, inn. Uh, scene two, they're aboard the ship. And scene three, they're on the island. And so I've got three different things that I have to have it. Now, for me, I usually keep my, my setting simple so that it's easy to do, easy to find the parts and pieces that people need. But on the other hand, um, there are some of these things that aren't, you know, take a little bit more effort, okay? So there it is. Now, what was I gonna tell you? So setting at rise. Sometimes it's just the beginning, and sometimes if there are scenes, there may be several scenes of, and so you will do an at, a setting and an at rise for each scene. Characters, how do you do characters? Characters are on their own page, and in this one, I have character centered, I have the colon, and then I have them all listed. Um, one, two, three, yeah, three fables of Aesop. I have them all lift, listed in capital letters. You will notice that on this particular one, I make sure that Amthula is mentioned as, as far as who she is, because otherwise, what's an Amthula? Oh, well, she's a 
Greek child, and she is the narrator as well. She's the, she's the one who ties all of the three stories together. The rest of them, you don't need any further information. You know what a tortoise is. You know what a hare is, just in case you don't. That's a turtle and a rabbit. Okay. You know what a skunk is, a bluebird, a record. So I really don't have to explain that in there. So then I put all of those characters over there. Okay. Now with, with another one, I made it slightly different in so much that I grouped them together. You got the characters and it's Jim and the, oh, I had to explain what the poly narrator was. Uh, a narrator who talks on lots of, and takes on lots of small parts. So my narrator also did several parts in, in, in the show. Then I've got some of the main characters, and then I have other seamen. Doot, doot. Then I have other pirates. Meow. Then I have, what else do I have? Townsfolk. Meow. And then I have, oh, I mentioned the scenes. Oh, five scenes, what? Well, there it is. Okay, so at the Admiral Benbow Inn, on board the Hispaniola, in the galley, that's the kitchen on the ship, top deck, and on the island. So apparently I had to do more. And I put all of those scenes right there at the bottom of my characters list. This one I also did differently. I put the characters, the word, all in caps. And what did I do? Underline it, underlined it. Then I put the characters all in lowercase. So as long as you're consistent with what you do, you're fine. You're good to go. Okay? Oh, golly, yeah. Okay. So when I did When LV Caught the Rainbow... Uh, I wanted to easily see the students from the rest. So I've got LV and then I've got students. Okay, good. And then I have teacher and teacher has a name. And talks about it. And then these are the colors. Yes, they are named characters in this particular play. So there it is. That's how you format. So you've got your, your lines, your dialogue, the name of your character. How are they supposed to be speaking? Are they happy, sad, quiet? Does it matter? You don't have to put it there. And then their line. The name of the character, when they're talking, is capitalized. When um, you need stage directions, like what's going on, those are in parentheses, okay? Boop. Um, then, if it's music, uh, don't worry about music. I mean, unless you want to. If you want to write a little bit of music in your stuff, um, I would highly recommend... Oh, don't have the books out here. I happen to have two books that I got from Scholastic, The Rhyming Dictionary. Um, I tried to get an adult one, and it was too much for me. My mind was blown. Um, and then I got one from a... It was a book fair. And then I found another one at a secondhand store. So I was like, okay, I'll take both. Um, they are both the same book. One's a little older, and I thought, maybe there's a few more rhyming words. It helps uh, to get things going a little bit faster when you're doing music, if you're doing music, or even if you're doing a poem within the show. In one of mine, The Legend of Annie Christmas, I actually have uh, str the strollers, and they actually do a rhyme in there. And, of course, it's easier if I can just look it up real fast uh, to figure out what I'm going to do. So enough with that. It is your turn. I'm going to give – here is your writing practice, Okay. You're going to write a short conversation between two people, two friends, um, or between grandchild, grandmother, okay? So short conversation between two friends or two people. You could also, here's your other idea, write a two-person, conver a short conversation between two nursery rhyme characters. So maybe you have a short conversation between Jack and Jill. You know, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Or maybe you have a short conversation between Little Miss Muffet and the... The Muffin Man. Sorry, I had to go through the song in my head before I could get to Muffin Man. So you've got Little Miss Muffin and the Muffin Man. What do they say to each other? So keep it short. And then once you get it ready, go ahead and, if you want, is rehearse it. You can use a friend um, or a parent or a sibling to help you out with your two-person conversation. And you're going to, um, if you want, rehearse it then record it. You do, not have to have, you do not have to have it memorized. You can use it with your script in hand, but do rehearse it because you don't want to sound like you're reading. You need to act out those lines. So if I'm not memorized with mother, um, I still want to sound, be expressive. The room looks nice, Jim. You must have gotten up early to clean it, but I see you left out a box and the broom. Put that away too. Then you can also look at the camera if you've got it rehearsed a little bit. Um, he says, yes, ma'am. Unlock the door. We're ready to open. The Admiral Benbow. Okay, so rehearse it a little bit. And then, so rehearse, record, and then post it, if you want, in the comments below, so that we can see how it wins. I would love to see what you guys come up with. Now, I'm going to do one more thing. I have story dice. I'm going to get some of these cubes. I love them, love them, love them. They're good story starters. So I'm going to get just, ah, I'm falling here, dropping, I guess. I'm going to get three of these cubes. I'm going to roll them, and then that is what your two characters are talking about. Okay, it looks like I've got, funny, a treasure chest. I have a cactus. 
and it looks like it's, whoops, sorry, an amoeba. So, amoeba, cactus, treasure chest, those are your words. Those are your conversation subjects. Okay, you guys, go have fun. I will see you next time on Script Writing with Marion.